Okay, now that I can see that Excel is not going to be the best program in order to keep track of my multiple tables of data, I'm going to jump over to Access. Uh, Access, if you're familiar with the other Office programs, Access will be a little bit familiar, but it does have uh, quite a difference in interface, so that'll take a little getting used to. But I've just started up Access, and I'm going to create a blank database. My small screen, there it is, blank database option right up there. In fact, let me kind of stretch that out a bit. There we go, so I'm going to create a new blank database, and it prompts me right away to go ahead and save this database. So I'm going to go ahead and give my database a name. In fact, I'll call it Database 3, the default name. And I'll save it into my My Docs folder, Create. Now, databases are made up of various parts or objects. One of the most critical, if not the most critical, is the table. You can't have a database without at least one table. And if you're using something like Access, you're probably making two or more tables, as we're going to be doing. It defaults to a new table. I'm in, I'm in the Table Tools Data Sheet tab for the ribbon and I currently have my current ta my table 1 is set up and it's in a particular view called datasheet view and over on the left side of the ribbon there is a view toggle and there's datasheet view and design view I'm gonna do a little work in datasheet view and then I'm gonna jump over to design view so we can see them both well in datasheet view since the interface is just like Excel it's gonna be really easy to work with comparing my Excel tables basically I want to create two tables like this my first table is gonna be my employees table and my fields are going to be employee ID, employee name, employee pay, employee email address. So um, it's already got an ID field set up and if I click on this I can see what kind of data type it is. So just above here it's set to data type auto number and that's perfectly fine but I could change it. For instance in my scenario I, I put in some letters. I'm going to do A, B, C, D. So I'm going to change that. I'm going to go from data type auto number to data type text and then I could actually double click on this field name here and I could put in employee ID there we go and I'll put in A and then I'm gonna do some field names employee name employee pay and employee email employee name employee pay employee email and for data types for these, employee name will be text, employee pay will be text, employee email. Um, I'm going to keep it as text, however there is a hyperlink data type too. That could come in handy. But since this is just a practice, I'll go ahead and keep it as a text data type. And then I'm going to take another second here and I'm going to just go ahead and uh, fill out this table. And I'll just start off with A, tab over, put in the data that I have on my Excel spreadsheet. There we go, so I've just filled out the data, and of course I realize that employee pay really should be a number or a currency data type. So let me go ahead and click on any of these employee pay ones, it doesn't really matter which one, and I'm going to go to data type, and actually it did default to number. I'm going to change that over to currency, because they really are going to be dollar values. A uh, number would have worked out fine too, though. All right, so now I've got my four fields, employee ID, employee name, employee pay, employee mail, uh, and text data type, text data type, currency data type, text data type. Fantastic. I'm going to jump back over to employee ID. Notice that in addition to a text data type, it's also a unique field. This is going to be my primary key field, okay? So here's my basic table in datasheet view. I'm going to jump over to design view. It's probably going to prompt me to save, and I will. I'm going to call this employees. Now this is design view for that very same table. Notice I can go back to datasheet view and I can go back to design view and I can just toggle between those two views using the upper part of the view button. Okay, So here's design view, here's my four, my four fields, the data types are readily visible and notice employee ID has this little key icon indicating that that's the primary key. And remember, the primary key of a particular table is going to be that special field that's guaranteed unique for each record, a record being a row for any person, place, or thing. So my record for David includes his primary key or employee ID number, which in this case is a letter D. So that's the primary key field. In every table you're going to have a primary key. Some tables might have two, but most common is just one primary key. All right, so I've got that going on, and here's my first table. Now, there's a lot of options down here for field properties, but I'm not going to get into those quite yet. That'll come in a later video. So I've got my first table. I'm going to go and create another table. Uh, so I'm going to simply click on the Create tab, 
and I'm going to create a new table in design view. Notice I'm in design view, I'm not in data sheet view. I could switch over easy enough, but I'm going to do it right in here. This particular table is going to be for my jobs. I'm going to have job ID. Now for job ID, I numbered them 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I'm going to do an auto number for this. Okay? And then I'm going to have um, job name, that'll be text, and then I'm going to have employee ID to keep track of which employee worked on which particular job. Now this part's pretty critical. Employee ID is a special field called a foreign key, and if you remember, my employee ID in my jobs table is going to match up with my employee ID and my employees table. In the employees table, employee ID is a primary key. But on my jobs table, employee ID is called a foreign key. It's really important when you go to make these relationships between multiple tables that the table, I'm sorry, the field in question has the exact same data type. Now that doesn't mean that I have to do an auto number and auto number if that's what I did. An auto number and number will match up. Now since employee ID is a text field on my employees table, I need to make sure that employee ID is a text field in my jobs table. Okay, So I'm going to hear employee ID is text field. That's critical that I've got that matched up. Okay, And then of course then I've got um, job date. Um, actually I'll make that a date data type. And job hours, I'll make that a number data type. All right, so I've got my field set. Now job ID is not already set as my auto as my primary key, and that's what it's going to be. So I'll just click once, and I could click here on the field or right here on the uh, field selector, f f field selector or row selector. And I'm just going to uh, I could right click and choose primary key right from the context menu, or while it's selected, I click the primary key button up on the ribbon to indicate that it's a primary key. If you try to save a table in Access without a primary key, it will warn you. All right, so I've got that taken care of. Let me go ahead and hit Save for this table. Just as a little note here, when you click a button like Save or Control S in Access, you're not really saving the whole database file. You're actually only saving the very object that you're currently working on. In this case, my jobs table, currently called Table 1. But don't worry, the Access database is constantly being saved in the background too. So I'm going to hit Save, which is going to save my table, and I will call this Jobs. So now I have an employees table and a jobs table. Of course, my jobs table doesn't have any data in it. So I'm going to jump over to data sheet view, and I'm going to enter in some data for my various jobs. Okay? And basically, since my first field, job ID, is an auto number, I don't have to enter anything there. I can just tab right past it. I can go to job name. Uh, first one was Ralph Co. The employee ID involved was C for Carla. The job date, 10-1-09 and so forth. So I'm going to go ahead and fill this all out with the recorder off. Okay, so now my second table is all filled out. I'll just press uh, Control S in order to save all of that. So I've got my two tables. I've got my employees table. Let me jump over to data sheet view. Here's my employees table. Employee ID is the primary key. I've got my jobs table. Job ID is the primary key. And now I'm going to establish a relationship between these two tables so that they're matched up. When you establish a relationship amongst tables, the tables can't be open. So I'm going to go ahead and close each of my two tables. And if you were prompted to save, you would save. I'm going to go to the Database Tools ribbon, and I'm going to go to the Relationships window. The Show Table dialog box appears, and I can, choose, I can double click my two tables available, and then close my Show Table dialog box. If you need to get that Show Table dialog box again, there's a button for it right here on the ribbon. So there's my employees table and my jobs table. And these can be rearranged if you have more than one, more than two tables. It's nice to kind of put them into a, a neat order. All right, so I've got my tables listed, and all of the fields are in there. And of course, we can clearly see the primary key field because it has a little key icon. Now, when you're ma making your relationship, you have to know the two fields you're going to match up. Now, it's pretty easy with this example because the fields are have the same field name, so that's a big clue right there. They don't always have the same field name, though. Employee ID to employee ID. Primary key to foreign key. You click and drag one of them over to the other. And as soon as you let go of the button, you're going to get the Edit Relationships dialog box. And the only thing I'm going to do on here is enforce referential integrity. 
What that means is I will not be able to enter a job into my jobs table with an employee ID if that employee ID doesn't already exist in my employees table. Basically, my employees, I have four of them, A, B, C, and D. If I were to try to create a new job with employee ID L, it would not let me do it because they have to match up. I can only do it this way. Now, if I do have a separate employee L, what I would have to do is I'd have to go to my employees table, create that new employee first, and then I could go to the jobs table and put that one in there. But enforcing referential, referential integrity is a good thing. It helps to ensure that you have good quality data. So I'm going to enforce that, click create, and now I can see the relationship, and I can see that it's a one to many relationship. One to many relationship. Extremely common in databases.